Okay. Here is our last historical thinking video. Woohoo! I'm sure you are relieved. But this is super important for the whole rest of this class. So I figured I'd spend quite a bit of time on it. Alright, so. Um, close reading is our last one. And for this one, the questions we are asking ourselves are what claims does the author make um, what evidence does the author use what language words phrases images or symbols does the author use to persuade the documents audience and how does the documents language indicate the author's perspective okay so we're trying to figure out basically what exactly is the author saying? Where's the evidence? Um, and how is their language implying what they think about the topic? Okay. So for this one, we'll be going back to our trusty old document A, which is our Black Codes document, once again. <clears throat> Alright, so our first question, what claims does the author make? Basically, they make five different claims in here, right? Um, because they're stating five different laws that they're trying to put in place. So, um, Da, da 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 can't come within town limits without special permission from employers um, so this one the claim is freedmen um, are not allowed in the town basically without permission from employers the second statement would be or the second claim would be well this is kind of goes along with the first one because no freedman shall live within the town <coughs> unless they're like living on their employers property basically and that goes along with the first one because they're not even allowed in town without permission from their employer and if they lived in town with their employer, then obviously they would have permission from them. Third, um, no meetings of freedmen. Freedmen are not allowed to meet. That would be the claim. Freedmen are not allowed to meet. No meetings. Four, freedmen cannot carry firearms or weapons and they can't sell anything without permission from their employer. <clears throat> and then the last one, every freedman has to work for a white person. So those are our claims in this um, <coughs> source. I promise I'm, I don't have the COVID I just have a tickle in the back of my throat, so I apologize for coughing. Um, so two, what evidence does the author use? This it really is the evidence. So um, if I was, if we were looking at like a news article or something of that nature, then you would be able to pull evidence um, out, but as this is just a law that's in place um, th this is the evidence this is like the primary source right here so we can kind of skip that question what language does the author use to persuade the documents audience um, I think they do a pretty good job of they keep it like very professional writing. Um, 
so there's nothing like really inflammatory about this it's very basic writing um, very like technical and I think they did that on purpose so that uh, they would seem more reasonable so just the way they phrased things um, they always refer to the uh, African-Americans as Negro or freedmen um, they don't refer to them as African Americans or blacks anywhere throughout this document. Um, they always refer to the people as employers or um, white person or former owner. <coughs> and then a fine of $5, pretty reasonable. You know, it's not super expensive, but. I mean, back then, with what freedmen were making, it's kind of expensive, but... Um, two days on the public streets, not unreasonable. You know, these are pretty reasonable as far as black codes go. So I think they did that on purpose, just to not be super inflammatory towards... They chose specific wording on purpose. Um, and then the last question, how does the document's language indicate the author's perspective? And even though I said, like, it's not a very inflammatory, there's nothing, like, crazy, um, unless you read into it deeper, about these statements. Um, but you can tell that there is bias against um, African Americans at this time because obviously they are being kept down. They are being looked at as second-class citizens, like I said previously. Okay, so going to our question prompts. Um, I think the author chose these words in order to, and I said, seem more reasonable Um, and ration, kind of rationalize <coughs> the um, laws they put in place. The author is trying to convince me to follow these laws. <coughs> Unquestioningly. And then three, the author claims. Um, I'm going to summarize. So there's four specific claims in here, basically, but I'm going to summarize and I'm going to say the author claims. Read men should. Have less privileges slash rights than whites. And then the evidence used to support the author's claims, and like I said, if this was a news article or something like that, that's where you would have, uh, you'd find evidence from where they're pulling their information from. But since this is the primary, like, they're not pulling this information from anywhere else. So there's not really any evidence that we can pull up right here. And that is it. That is all the steps you need to go through when you are looking at a document that I give you. And I have um, linked this historical thinking chart for you. I have these videos posted that you can watch whenever you desire, and um, we will be doing practice in class, so I look forward to that. Thank you.